So you're hungry for more horror tales, you starving thrill seekers? Well, here's some fodder to send quivers through your spines, if not bullets through your brains, as our luckless Lydia stands a helpless target before her nervous husband. I am the Watchman of the Graveyard, and this is from my best tales told to me by the Silent Dead. I call it Terror Needs a Stage. Every nerve in Lydia Foreman's body became taut, and her breathing stopped each time Carl did the cigarette act. But audiences loved Death's close wine, and she and her husband loved the tremendous success they were winning. Miraculous! Sensational! As the comic relief for their sharpshooting act, they had Remy, a pet monkey who would jump on Lydia's shoulder whenever Carl called his name. Remy! Pretty Remy! <laughs> They loved their ugly pet monkey, and the crowd loved them. In their dressing room, their agent excited them with wonderful bookings he had gotten them in all the old capitals of Europe. Vienna! Paris! How thrilling! You sail in two weeks! Carl even prevailed on the captain to allow Remy to occupy their stage room. But the rules are that all animals must go with the freight. Let him stay in our room, and we'll perform for your passengers free! The captain agreed, and Remy loved the idea so much that thereafter the monkey slept with his masters. In London, Paris, and now Vienna, the sharpshooting act of the foremans received tremendous ovations. Their act became more and more daring. Steady, Lydia. Steady. <laughs> Always a big hit, Remy had been brought more and more into the act. An exploding apple on his head always relieved the tension and brought a reaction of hysterical laughter when he jumped on Lydia's shoulder at the sound of his name. Remy! <laughs> After the show, a message was delivered to their dressing room, which Mo Sender, their agent, distrusted. We're invited to perform at Baron Mansfred's estate. Don't accept. There's crazy stories about his castle, vampires and all that. We must not disappoint a Baron. Let's accept, Carl. The dingy old castle was a disappointment to Lydia, who had dreamed of Hollywood grandeur, and Baron Manfred was not the well-groomed, sophisticated nobleman she had expected. We brought Remy. We hope it's all right. Of course. Welcome to Regent's Hall. Thank you, Baron. After their performance, the conversation turned to the gossip of the neighborhood. Please, don't pay attention to talk of vampires. This is a superstitious village. As they retired for the night, entering the musty old room with its dark canopied bed, Remy rushed gleefully towards the bed's foot. I'm glad the Baron said Remy could sleep in our room. As Carl lay peacefully sleeping, a piercing scream suddenly awakened him. <coughs> Lydia, what is it? My throat. I, I've been bitten. It must be the vampire. Nonsense. Just an insect, perhaps. Go back to sleep. At daybreak, Carl was again awakened by a cold wind. To his amazement, Lydia was not in bed. Where could she have gone? Anxious, suspicious, Carl started to seek Lydia when the door opened. Lydia, where have you been? Oh, Carl, I'm so nervous. I have been sleepwalking. After breakfast, Carl and Lydia were saying goodbye when a servant rushed in. Your lordship, two villagers have died. They say the vampire did it. Superstitious fools. The horrible thought of Lydia sleepwalking and her disappearance from bed made Carl's blood run cold. My god, Lydia? In Bucharest the next day, Carl strangely requested that Lydia and Remy take separate rooms. That night, I can't stand it. I must see if she's in bed. She's gone again. Even Remy didn't hear her. With terrible foreboding, Carl searched the old hotel grounds for his wife. Lydia, where are you? It's no use. She's disappeared. That night, something, or someone, drained and drank the blood of an innocent girl. <coughs> Backstage at the theater the next day, there was excited muttering. Did you hear? A vampire in town. A girl was found drained of her blood. What shall I do? It must be Lydia. Rattled by his shocking suspicion of his wife, distracted by her disappearances, Carl felt unnerved for the first time in the history of their act. Why does Carl seem so nervous? Lydia was bitten by a vampire and is now one herself, I'm sure. 
As the cigarette in Lydia's mouth fell apart, the shot reaching its target with Carl's unerring aim, Lydia perspired profusely in relief. But Carl thought, Maybe I'm wrong. How can Lydia be a vampire? Once suspicion had taken root that Lydia had been infected with vampirism, Carl couldn't escape his insidious poison and tossed sleeplessly at night. Shall I go see if she's in bed? No, I dare not! Back in bed, images of Lydia as a vampire seeking out victims haunted him. My god, I may be next! Hear ye, hear ye! What's that? A, a town crier at this hour? Lock your doors! A vampire has killed a man! I must see if Lydia's in bed. His worst fears were realized. Lydia was gone. Now I'm sure Lydia's the vampire. The next morning, however, Lydia was back in bed. Lydia, wake up. Where were you last night? Carl, I dreamed Remy was gone. I was frantic, and in my sleep went looking for him. On the way to the theater, Carl became filled with terrible resolve. Maybe I shall be her next victim. I have to kill her before she kills others, or me. Remy and I can make it look like an accident. On stage the next day, as Carl was about to shoot, he softly called the monkey, who immediately jumped on Lydia. Remy! With deadly aim, Carl's bullet pierced Lydia's temple as shrieks from the audience rent the air, along with Remy's wild screams. My darling, what have I done? I must put on an act. An accident! The monkey jumped too soon! At bedtime that night, poor Lydia's dead. There'll be no more vampire now. The phone. It was the hotel manager. Mr. Foreman, the vampire killed another villager tonight. Lock your door. W what But but that's impossible! Confused, shocked, Carl went to bed wondering. But Lydia was the vampire, and she's dead! Later that night, after falling asleep again, Carl awakened suddenly, his fingers clutching his throat. Help! I'm being bitten! Out of the darkness, huge bat-like wings spread wide, menacingly. Help! The vampire is sucking my blood! Suddenly, the vampire began to shrink, changing forms, as Carl's eyes remained fixed in horror. My god, it's... it's Remy! Remy, you are the vampire, not Lydia! <sighs> the next day, a new body joined Lydia in the cemetery. Carl's. How do I know this story? Of course I know. You see, I am the watchman of the graveyard. Poor Carl made a grave mistake, didn't he?